Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm gonna to be covering the top five full frame RF lenses from Canon and why I think these should be the top five. I absolutely love these lenses and I've been using these lenses for the past two years now, nearly two years, wow. Man, it's been a while since I've been shooting on the old EF glass, but nonetheless, I absolutely love this new lens system and I wanna cover the top five lenses in my opinion and what I think are the absolute best ones. I've got them all lined up here. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. All right, so let's start off big. Let's start off with the 70 to 200. Now, this comes in two forms. You've got the version with f4 aperture and you've got the version with the f2.8 aperture. Now, for strategic and uh, for financial purposes, I've gone with the f4 version and hear me out. I think the f4 and the f2.8 version both do an incredible job. Of course, the biggest difference here with the f2.8 and the f4, you get better low light performance and better background blur with the f2.8 version, but you also get some drawbacks as well. First of all, of course, it's more expensive. So the F4 version is about $1,000 cheaper. Don't quote me on specific prices, but roughly it, uh, yeah, it's definitely a very, very large difference in price, but it's also a large difference in size and weight. This thing is tiny and it is actually smaller than my 24 to 70 millimeter, which is, yeah, surprising to say the least. But nonetheless, I think the size and the weight of this lens makes me carry it around more, and therefore I'm more inclined to be shooting tele stuff instead of carrying the 2.8 version around that's bigger, can't stand up in my bag, which is actually a huge, huge necessity for me. I have a load of stuff in my camera bag already, so if I've got a big lens that's laying down that's taking up the space of two or three lenses, this one can just stand up, it's nice and small, and of course it doesn't weigh as much. So that also makes me wanna shoot with it more, and wants me, it makes me wanna take it out more often, and it also is way better for my back. So it's not giving me any kind of back issues when I'm out and about shooting. If I'm going hiking for five or 10 kilometers, or whatever the case, if I'm on a trip, if I'm flying, whatever the case, I think the F2.8 version is well over one kilo, which is crazy. But nonetheless, that is why I have gone with the F4 version. But if you do have the F2.8 version, you are in luck because arguably it is a better lens. But I love this lens being able to just zoom in. Whoop, it's locked. Being able to just zoom in, snipe out some unique compositions and then come back. This lens is an absolute favorite. All right, so next up we have the 24 to 70 F2.8. Now this lens, I've been using this lens since day one. I bought this alongside my Canon R6 when I first got it and I love this guy. This lens was arguably my all time one and done lens. I would go out on shoots and only take this lens sometimes. I love it. You can do absolutely everything with it. Of course, you get 24 millimeters, which is fairly wide, all the way into 70 millimeters. Don't really need an explanation on why this lens is good. Of course, you get the f2.8 Of course, you get the f2.8 aperture, but one of the biggest reasons why I think this lens is absolutely killer image stabilization. This lens has image stabilization built in. Now this isn't something that you could get in the old EF lenses. So the EF 24-70 f2.8, the Mark I or the Mark II, didn't have image stabilization built in. If you wanted image stabilization, you had to go for the 24-105 and that had image stabilization, or you could have gone for the 24-70 f4, which f4 for, especially for 24 to 70 for, for 7200 i think f4 is fine but for 24 to 70 you do want that f2.8 um, so yeah you could only get it in those two lenses but now you can get the 24 to 70 f2.8 with image stabilization this guy is amazing and like i said it is seriously a one and done lens if you guys don't want to be changing lenses while you're out shooting if you only have one to worry about one lens and that's it then this is the lens for you without a doubt all right, and just a quick side note from the top five RF lenses, I wanted to let you know that I have just launched the beginner's guide to consistently taking good photos and it's live. You can now go and enroll in the link down below in the description of the video and I would love to see you over there. I'd also love to get your thoughts and opinions on the course in general. So if you haven't already signed up, go and check it out down below. Let's continue. All right, so the next lens on the list is the 50 millimeter F1.8. And I actually don't have it here with me. It's currently shooting this video as we speak. I love this lens and I use it way more often than personally I would like to admit. These lenses are so cheap yet so effective. They're tiny, they're lightweight, but they're super sharp. And with the 1.8 aperture, 
my goodness, I absolutely love this lens. One of the things I love most about this lens, well, there's probably two things. It's the size and weight. So when I go out to shoot, I don't look like a professional. I just look like a tourist, which is ideal, especially when I'm putting this on my R5C, which is a full-blown cinema camera. Believe me, the last thing you wanna do is be drawing attention to yourself. And then the other reason why I love this lens so much is that it's cheap. Now see, the good thing here is this lens is about 160 US dollars, which is awesome. And in the grand scheme of things, especially when we're talking about photography and you know camera equipment in general, this lens is very affordable compared to everything else. This lens, for example, is about two and a half thousand US dollars, and this lens is 160 US dollars. Now the good reason here, apart from just not hitting the bank account as hard, is that if anything ever happened to this lens, I'm not gonna be heartbroken. I can simply just go to the camera shop pick up a new one and move on from there. Instead, if something happened to this lens, well, that'd be a different story. Two and a half thousand dollars versus a $160 hit. Yeah, I don't have to tell you why that's such a big deal. And then of course, one last reason why I do love this lens is it's 1.8 aperture. Being able to shoot everything at 1.8 for $160 is an absolute steal. All right, next up on the list is another small prime and it's arguably exactly the same size as the 50 millimeter f1.8 and this is a unique one and for a certain reason this is the 16 millimeter f2.8 now the reason i got this lens was for vlogging even though i don't vlog all that often i used to vlog a little bit more in the past but i also don't have a 16 to 35 and spoiler the last lens is not a 16 to 35. i shot a lot of stuff when on my 5d mark IV with a 16 to 35 and while it was great it limited me so much you only got wide and then a little wide and then a little less wide sorry i should say from 16 to 35 it wasn't that big of a change so the reason why i got this lens is this is to replace the 16 to 35. This lens is fairly sharp, so it's great. It's got the 2.8 aperture, which is awesome, and it's the same aperture that my 16 to 35 already had. Now, of course, it's a prime, so I can't zoom in. I've got 16 and 16 only. But the cool thing about this is it's small, it's lightweight, and this was about 300 US dollars. In comparison to the RF 16 or 15 to 35, now that they've released, uh, that thing is like two and a half thousand dollars. So to pick this up instead was an absolute no-brainer. This is my vlogging lens. This I will shoot some landscapes with. This when I need to open up a big scene, maybe I'm shooting some interiors or architecture, I'll shoot it with this lens and I'll take it off, put it in my bag and either put the 50 millimeter back on, the 24 to 70 or the last lens that we're about to cover. But this lens easily replaced my 16 to 35 and it's also way smaller. So if you don't really use the 16 to 35 for anything other than vlogging, Believe me, the 16 millimeter F2.8 is perfect. It's not the perfect lens, but it's the perfect replacement. All right, last but not least, lens number five. Now this one is probably the spiciest of them all. And I would not recommend most people to buy this lens because it is outrageous. It's super heavy, it's super expensive, but my goodness, the images that come out of this lens are incredible. And of course, it's none other than the absolute behemoth 28 to 70 f2 now you might be thinking to yourself zach why do you have a 24 to 70 and a 28 to 70 well i'll be honest with you i'm actually in the process of selling this lens so i've got it and i thought while i still have it it's probably the perfect time to make a youtube video including the lens uh, and i still believe that this is the one and done lens but it's the one and done lens for a certain person and uh it's definitely the one and done lens for more people than this lens is. So let me talk to you about this lens. First of all, it's not stabilized like the 24 to 70 is. Of course, that is a downside, but to be honest with you, I'm really not bothered about it all that much. This lens, the biggest reason why this lens is so, I guess, crazy, if you will, is the constant F2 aperture. This replaces all my prime lenses, apart from the 16 millimeter for obvious reasons. And of course, I always have the 50 millimeter on me for all the other reasons as well. But every other prime lens has pretty much just morphed into this lens and I only need to carry this around. Now, of course, if I wasn't worried about size, weight, um, any attention when I'm out shooting, I would just take this lens with me and this lens only and leave the 50 millimeter at home. I could partner that up with the 70 to 200 and with these two lenses, I feel confident to shoot absolutely everything. Now the F2 aperture stays constant all the way from 28 to 70, which is really, really cool. And it's also incredibly sharp at the F2 aperture between 28 to 70 from the center of the image all the way to the outside of the image, which is just amazing. Now I know I sound like a bit of a fanboy 
And to be honest with you, I am. I love this lens so much. It speeds up my workflow like crazy, but there are a few downsides. First things first, the weight of this lens. It's one and a half kilos. It's huge. I know it's not as big as my head, but you know, it's definitely getting there. Uh, this thing is massive. It weighs me down like crazy. Uh, and this is another reason why I have the F4 version of this lens and not the F2.8 version, because when I've got this in my bag, believe me, I'm trying to cut weight wherever I can. The other huge downside to this lens is the 95 millimeter um, lens, not lens, the 95 millimeter filter thread on the front of it. Now, most lenses will have 77 millimeters or 82 millimeters, but this is 95 millimeters. Now, this creates two issues. One, not many filters are built for 95 millimeter threads. So I actually am incredibly limited to what I can put on the front of this lens. And then the other reason is the price. 95 millimeter lens filters are so expensive. This two, no, this one to five stop variable ND filter cost me about 250 US dollars. And uh, yeah, I mean, hey, it is what it is. This lens is amazing. I absolutely love it. I'm starting to take it everywhere. It is the one and done lens for me. And yeah, unless you need the stabilization, go for the 24 to 70. And of course, uh, if you need that F2.8, go for this guy. But of course, the one downside, of course, not the one downside, there's many downsides, but another big downside to this guy is the price. This is nearly $4,000. So unless you're a professional making money from this, um, I really couldn't recommend this lens. But if you are, and you do need to be super fast when you're out and about shooting, you are run and gun, you just need to get in there, get the shot and get out. Instead of you know sitting there, put your bag down, change lenses, this, that, and the other, this lens is 100% for you. All right, guys, and that pretty much wraps up today's video. These are my top five RF lenses for 2023, 2022, 2024, whatever the case, I absolutely love this lens setup. And while I will be saying goodbye to the 24 to 70, uh, hopefully that will be gone fairly soon to, I guess, cover some of the costs of the 28 to 70. I love all these lenses and they've definitely made me the creator I am today. Well, maybe I shouldn't be saying that. Gear definitely doesn't make you who you are, but it helps so much. But anyway, that is gonna wrap up today's video. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've been able to learn something. And if you are in the market for any of these lenses, you can find them in the links below. They are Amazon affiliates, so I will get a small kickback, but by all means, go shopping and have an absolute blast. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.